In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to be talking about converting between SI prefixes. So say you have two different numbers that use two different SI prefixes, and you want to go between them. How do you do that? Well, this is a common question you might have if you say, look at how much data your iPhone stores. It turns out to be maybe, say, 8 gigabytes, and you want to know, hey, how many megabytes is that? What we're going to do in this video is talk about how you can do those sorts of conversions. This builds off of my previous video, an introduction to SI prefixes. If you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and do that first. So you have your iPhone storage of eight gigabytes and you wanna know, okay, how many megabytes is that? How do you go between those two sorts of units? Well, I've broken this process down into four steps. In step one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our starting and target SI prefix on the list. What's our starting and target SI prefix? Well, our starting is just the SI prefix used in the number we begin with, and our target's what we want to get to. So here in our problem, we can see that giga is our starting SI prefix, where our target SI prefix is mega. So what we want to go do is we want to identify those in the list. So I'll write starting here under giga, and our target is this mega. So we can go down to our SI prefix list and we can identify our starting and target SI prefixes. Starting being giga here, 10 to the ninth, and our target being mega, 10 to the sixth. So step two here is subtract the starting exponent from the target exponent. So the starting exponent, 10 to the ninth, and the target exponent, 10 to the sixth. So what step two is telling us to do is just subtract nine, our starting exponent, from six, our target exponent. We do nine minus six, we're gonna get three. Okay, what do we do with that three? Step three tells us, okay, if our answer to that is positive, we're gonna move our decimal of our number to the right. And so we can see here that our three is in fact positive. There's no negative sign there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eight, uh, our eight gigabytes, so we start with eight, and we're gonna move our decimal over. And which direction are we gonna move it? We're gonna move it to the right because our difference between our two exponents is positive. So we start with our, exponent, our decimal there, and we move it to the right one, two, three times. And then we fill that guy in with zeros. And step four tells us just replace our starting SI prefix with our target SI prefix. So when we write down the units of 8,000, it's now in megabytes. It was gigabytes, but now that we've moved our decimal three times, it's megabytes. So what we have here is 8,000 megabytes. So eight gigabytes is 8,000 megabytes. And we can go between any two numbers and SI prefixes using those same steps. Again, we might wanna write that 8,000 megabytes clean it up a bit. So you could just go ahead and write it without all the bounces and get 8,000 megabytes. Okay, let's do a few more examples. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go from 300 nanoseconds to that same amount of time expressed in microseconds. So again, we're going to want to find our starting and target SI prefixes. That's step one. So our starting SI prefix is nano, and our target SI prefix is micro. So I'll just put an S above nano for starting, and I'll put a T down here below micro for target. So we want to go from nanoseconds to microseconds. So let's identify nanoseconds and microseconds on our list. So those are both on the decimals on the side where we have small SI prefixes. So we can see micro is right here and nano is right there. And step two tells us, okay, subtract the starting exponent from the target exponent. Well, the starting exponent is minus nine. We can see that over on our a nano list. And our target is minus six. So we want to subtract minus six from minus nine. So we write minus nine, minus, and here I'm going to use parentheses. You should always use parentheses in the subtraction process if you have a negative exponent. The reason is, is that it's going to get confusing what you're doing if you don't write both of those signs very carefully. Remember, when you subtract a negative, it's the same thing as adding. So what we can really do is we can make this a positive sign and get rid of our negative. But you want to treat those situations carefully where you're subtracting a negative number. 
Remember, whenever you subtract a negative number, it's the same as adding it. All right, so minus 9 plus 6 gives us minus 3. And now, here in step 3, we see we follow a slightly different uh, procedure than we did last time. Because now, that difference there is negative, so we're going to be moving our decimal to the left. So we start with our 300 nanoseconds, and we're going to put our decimal right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to move our decimal to the left three times. Why three? Because that's what the difference was between negative 9 and negative 6. And why to the left? Well, because that difference was negative. All right, let's bounce our decimal over once, twice, three times. And now step four just says, go ahead and replace that starting uh, SI prefix with the target SI prefix. So we were going from nanoseconds and now to microseconds. So this is just 0.3 microseconds. All right. So again, we might want to write, go ahead and write that in a more cleaned up fashion, which would just be 0 0.3. We're going to drop those trailing zeros, those zeros that come behind it, because they don't change the number. And we're just going to write our unit out, which is microseconds. All right, so that's our answer, 0 0.3 microseconds. That is the same amount of time as 300 nanoseconds. One last example. Let's say now we're going from 100 kilometers and we want to write that in terms of millimeters. Step one, find our starting and target SI prefixes. Now is a good time to go ahead and pause the video. Give this a try yourself and see how you do and then hit play and see if you're correct. All right, so our starting SI prefix is kilo. Our target SI prefix is milli. So we're starting at kilo and we're going to milli. That's our target SI prefix. We can identify those in the list. And now we see a slightly different situation than we've seen before. We see kilo over here is 10 to the third and millis over here is 10 to the minus third. So we're still just gonna follow that step two and we're gonna subtract the starting exponent the 10 to the third, or the three, from our final exponent, minus three. So we get three minus a negative three. Once again, I use those parentheses there so we can keep track of our sign. And we can see that since we're subtracting the negative, once again, that's really positive and we can just get rid of that negative sign there. So that turns out to be three plus three, gives us a six. Now, what you're really doing here is figuring out how many times you need to move the decimal. So you may get to a point where you don't actually need to do the sub subtraction process to see how many times you need to move it. If you can just see, okay, I'm going from positive three to negative three, so I'm gonna be moving my decimal six times, that's great, and then you can go ahead and do that. This is just kind of the systematic way to do it, which is a good way to get started. Okay, so we wanna move our decimal six times, and step three says if it's positive, we're gonna move that to the right. So we're gonna be moving our decimal to the right. All right, so let's grab our number, which is 100 kilometers. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our decimal, which is right at the end of that number, and we're going to move it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're just going to fill those bounces in with zeros. And what we get there is actually 100 million millimeters. So step four tells us just replace our starting SI prefix with our final SI prefix. So now instead of writing kilometers, we're gonna be writing millimeters. Again, we have the option to write that and just clean it up. I'll add some commas in here so we can see the number a little more clearly. Okay, so we get 100 million, and that's millimeters. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that 100 kilometers is the same thing as 100 million millimeters. So never forget what you're doing here in this conversion process is just finding out a different way to express the same distance. It's related to trying to figure out, okay, how many kilometers did I travel if I know how many miles I traveled. We're just doing a conversion here between one type of measuring and another. All right. So that does it for this episode of 
Real Chemistry. Go to my YouTube page to see more videos on chemistry. You can also subscribe. As always, leave any comments or questions below this video and I'll try to answer them.